You might have heard about the iPhone 15 having features like Apple Log and shooting in ProRes. You might have also heard that Apple shot their latest event with this puppy right here, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and rigged it fully as if it was a cinema camera. So I put my iPhone to the test, grabbed some footage, and color graded it so that I can show you guys how to get the most out of it. So for this video, we'll try to keep it as simple as possible in terms of the amount of nodes that we'll be using to achieve our look. Starting from left to right with the noiser, white balance, exposure, saturation, color warper, skin tones, and enhancer. Now, if you don't know what the enhancer is, it's a powerful plugin that allows us to emulate the aesthetics of classic film stocks. They did not sponsor or ask me to make this video. I just think it's a really great tool that I've been using every day when it comes to color grading any of my footage. However, I do have a discount code to get 10% of your purchase through the link in the description if you do choose to get it for yourself. You wanna begin by dropping in the enhancer onto the last node and scrolling all the way to the bottom to disable all tools so that we have a clean slate to work with and nothing is affecting our image. As you can tell, our footage is in an Apple log format, so it looks really flat and washed out. That is to retain the most amount of color information and dynamic range in our clip. The enhancer makes it really easy to turn your clip from Apple log to Rec. 709. All you have to do is go to the input tab, click source, choose camera, click Apple and it'll automatically choose iPhone and Apple log as your format. And this is what our image looks like in a Rec. 709 format. So now that we have our image in Rec. 709, we'll begin by setting the proper white balance for our footage. A very easy way to do this if you didn't have a color checker in hand is to just select something that's white, use the eyedropper, click on it, and it'll set it for you. So this is pretty good, a good starting point, gave me some reassurance, but I'm gonna bump it up a little bit to make it a little bit cooler because that's the kind of vibe that I'm going for. A great thing to remember is that most of the time your skin tones will be tied to the white balance of your footage. So if you nail the white balance, adjusting your skin tones or getting the perfect skin tones will be so much easier. And then we'll also wanna make some exposure adjustments by making it brighter. Keep an eye out for our waveform, making sure that nothing's clipping and taming those highlights just to keep everything under control, making sure we don't get out of hand and we don't have any crushed blacks or clipping highlights. So everything looks pretty well balanced. As you can tell, Apple Log does a pretty good job of keeping all the details right where we want them to be. So for this video, I won't be going too in depth about all the tools that live within the Hanser, including the film profiles and the print film emulations that the Hanser has. But if you're interested in a video that does, you can watch that right here. For this particular clip, while we were out there shooting, I already had in mind a look that I wanted to go for. So I'll be choosing Using one of my favorite film stock profiles and that'll be Fuji Color Pro 400H. Then going down to the print tab, selecting Fujifilm 3513 print film and select an analog range limiter to make sure that I retain some of the shadows from being crushed and the highlights from clipping. Now, the Fujifilm 3515 print film has a pretty interesting history attached to it. You might recognize the name Fujifilm if you're familiar with disposable film cameras or film cameras in general, as well as Polaroids. But Fujifilm isn't just about cameras. They've been a big deal in the film industry too. Back in the analog days, they used to make film stocks for movies. One standout was the Fujifilm Eterna CP, which stands for color print, 35 13 di which stands for digital intermediate used in classics like lord of the rings the butterfly effect and twilight that's what gave those films their unique look so when you hear about fujifilm 3515 print film think of it like a bridge between the analog and digital worlds of filmmaking basically the digital version of a classic film stock aiming to recreate those classic looks that we love so now that we've selected our film stock and our print film one of the things that you'll notice is that we're missing some saturation in our image. It still looks pretty flat. So we'll want to work on the saturation node next. I like to aim for a film like saturation on digitally shot footage. This means that it's going to be more subtle, dense and pleasing to the human eye. To achieve this, I'll right click the saturation node, go to color space, select HSV, go back, select gamma 2.4, right click one more time, disable channel one, and disable channel three. This means we're only working with the saturation channel. So we'll use the primary wheels to increase our saturation and we'll use gain, bump it up to about 120. Looks good, keeping an eye on our image. And let's add some density with gamma around 0.03. And you can tell right away if I toggle it on and off, 
that it's not adding saturation the same way that you would with the saturation slider. It's a lot more subtle, dense, and it just looks pleasing to the human eye. So we can already tell that the footage is looking really nice and cinematic. The rest of the adjustments that we'll want to make to the image will be purely stylistic choices that I'm going to make. Now, if you watched my previous video on the enhancer, then you know that I absolutely love the color head tab. So we'll enable it. And my main objective here is to create some more color separation and color contrast. A super popular an easy way to do this is by going for the teal and orange look that a lot of people reference and a lot of people like to go for. And that is because teal and orange are two colors that sit opposite of each other on the color spectrum. Essentially here what we're doing is pushing our shadows towards more of a blue and cyan colder tone as well as pushing our highlights towards more of an orange and red warmer tone. And if I push either or to the extreme, you can tell right away the adjustments that it's making. So a good practice to get into is to push it all the way and then dial it back. So again, push it all the way. So you can see what it's doing and then dial it back. Same with the shadows, push it all the way. You can see that it's introducing a lot of cyan, a lot of blue into the shadows. That looks kind of goofy. So we're gonna dial it back to around 4.6, negative 4.6. This is looking good. Again, very subtle adjustments that go a long way and make a great impact in our image. Another great way to create contrast and the one that you guys are probably most familiar with by turning the darker part of the images even darker and the brightest part of the images even brighter. In the enhancer on the expand tab, you can do this independently in the way where you can select the black point or the white point and the white point will adjust only the brightest parts of your image and the black point will select only the darkest parts of your image. So in this case, I want to make it just a tad bit brighter without pushing it too much right around there. And I don't want to mess with the blacks because I'm pretty happy with the way they look. And again, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on your waveforms and your scopes here, making sure that the blacks are not being crushed and the highlights are not being blown out or they're not clipping. Now we do have this right here, which is the lights at the top. And you know, there's nothing that we can do about that right there. But the rest of the image is pretty well balanced. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max and Apple Log did a really good job at making sure that our image is really well balanced. And this is what our image looks without the expand and color head. And this is what it looks like with the color head and the expand. So I'm really loving the way our image is looking. What I don't love is that we have some green tinting on the parts of the image that shouldn't really have green in them. So we'll want to clean that up and we could easily just go to the white balance and introduce more magenta into the image. And honestly, that does a pretty good job of getting rid of most of it. But what I personally like to do is throw a color warper on it. And in this case, I'm gonna reduce some of the greens in the skin tones, our hair, and some of the yellows in the image as well. So I'm gonna slide my mouse over it and it'll show me where most of that is, just around here. And I'll kind of just start adjusting it, making very extreme changes so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I wanna bring it away from the green. And again, guys, subtle changes go a long way and after making more adjustments this is kind of where i ended up with again just creating some more color separation bringing those skin tones towards a tone that i'm happier with again very fine adjustments but the fine adjustments go a long way in making your image feel more balanced now when it comes to working on skin tones a great starting point like i said before is having your white balance set properly and then another great tool is something like this color checker which allows you to make sure that your colors are 100 percent accurate when you get to color grading so that you are actually working with the colors that you should be working with so again, white balance and the color checker will be your best friends when it comes to getting the proper image in camera. But in this case, we didn't use one because again, we were trying to be super low key. However, I know that the iPhone automatically sets the white balance to whatever its AI or algorithm thinks that looks best. And in this case, it did a pretty good job with some minor adjustments. So in the qualifier H cell tab, you can select the additive eyedropper and you can kind of just click on the colors that you want to adjust. If you click right here on highlight, then it'll show you exactly what you're selecting. And I mean, this is a pretty good way to do it. The problem is that it'll start grabbing other colors that you might not want to adjust. So another really easy way to do it is to go to the color tab at the top, go down to presets, and then click on six vector red and it'll automatically select right around where your skin tones will be. And with a few more adjustments, you can get right where you want it to be. 
So then you'll go to the curves tab. You'll go to hue versus hue, select the red parameters, bring it around where that red is highlighted and start adjusting your colors. So in this case, I'm pushing it towards magenta and I'll go to the luminance and I wanna make it pop a little bit more. So I'll push it. So it's pretty straightforward. If you're unsure about what you're doing with your skin tones, a great way to look at it is by going to your scopes and selecting vector scope and clicking the highlight button. And you'll be able to see here your skin tone line. So if you hover your mouse on top of your skin, then you'll see right there, that's right here is the skin tone line. If it's not activated, then you go to settings and you enable show skin tone indicator you can make this bigger and as long as this color right here is somewhat on this line then it means that your skin tone is pretty on point so that's a great way to reassure you that you're not doing something wrong or you're not completely off when it comes to your skin tones so you can tell now that the perceived brightness of our image has increased a lot more because of the color luminance and other small adjustments that we have made at this point i'll simply go back to the enhancer add some bloom inhalation to the image so we'll go to the enhancer scroll down to our bloom enable it as well as our halation and in the new version 7 of the Hanser pro you actually get some presets that you can choose from and i like to choose the 65 millimeter and 70 millimeter preset because those are the ones that i've found the most pleasing to my eye but you can also go to custom and you can adjust all of it yourself i just like going for the preset because it's Fast and easy. And here's the before and after with all the adjustments that we made. So this is how I approach editing my iPhone 15 Pro Max footage. I know there's a lot of tutorials out there that show you different ways on how to do it. This is just personally what works for me and how I color grade. You don't have to use the enhancer. In a separate video, I'll walk you through how to achieve this look without the enhancer if you don't own it. But if you do purchase it, then here's a video that you can check out where I go a lot more in depth into what the plugin is like. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.